I recall that uh, I had the honor of uh, delivering opening remarks uh, at the uh, GGGS uh, 2012, uh, that is one year ago. I now realize that I have uh, grown one year older. I'm much honored and pleased to have an opportunity at the uh, GGGS 2013 this morning to reflect on Korea's green growth policy experiences of the last five years. In order to undertake a prognosis on those policies as well as draw some implications for the green growth strategy in general. The Korean government formally launched green growth as a national strategy on August 15, 2008, the 60th anniversary of the Republic. The then President Lee Myung-bak, just six months in office, declared in his address marking the anniversary that uh, low carbon green growth would now be a pillar of Korea's new vision as well as the country's new development paradigm which seeks sustainable economic growth by reducing greenhouse gas emission and environmental pollution. President Lee elaborated this declaration by saying that key to green growth as such would be green technologies and clean energies, and in other words, green innovation. The Korean government has pursued green growth in a comprehensive, systematic, and vigorous way since then. It began with the establishment of the Presidential Committee on Green Growth that consisted of the Prime Minister and 13 ministers, as well as up to 36 prominent private experts. This was a presidential committee in the sense that it embodied President Lee's own strong commitment and drive and its agenda was set principally by the presidential office or the Blue House as it is called in this country. And it held its major policy conferences for debate and deliberation in the presence of president and a large congregation of key public-private sector stakeholders in the agenda of the day. President Lee's term expired on February 24 this year. So did that of the Presidential Committee on Green Growth at the end of last year. I had the honor to co-chair this committee with the Prime Minister as his private sector counterpart with the formal title of Chairman during its last two and a half years. My term as such also expired at the same time as that of the committee itself. And close to the end of my term, I steered the publication of a co-authored book whose objective was indicated by its title, quote, Korea's Green Growth 1.0, a critical assessment and recommendations for Green Growth 2.0, unquote, which I edited and had published in Korean in February this year. Under President Park and Hayes' new government, the former Presidential Committee on Green Growth has been undergoing restructuring into a Prime Ministerial Committee on Green Growth. The new Committee on Green Growth is expected to be launched toward the end of this month. The Presidential Committee used to be served by a large secretariat consisting of around 60 person people, mostly officials and secondment from 14 ministries but also including many experts from various specialized public and private institutions. The new Prime Ministerial Committee will now be served by a directorate with a prime, within the Prime Minister's office with a significantly smaller number of staff from within this office. The private sector members of the new committee, including the chairman, are yet to be named. President Park geun has not yet publicly revealed her stance on green growth. This is understandable in view of the fact that thus far she has been preoccupied with the more pressing work to launch her own government as well as with other priorities such as the need to cope with the heightened threat from North Korea that was probably intended to test her responsiveness and even more importantly, she has been concentrating on the work to follow up on her own presidential pledges, especially one to promote social inclusiveness by seeking what she calls grand social integration on the one hand, and the pledge to pursue and realize what she began, what she began calling a creative economy uh, during her campaign days, 
as Korea's new growth paradigm on the other hand. Still, what to make of the silence of the new government on green growth thus far has been a subject of somewhat intense speculation among officials, businessmen, and the media. By the same token, uncertainties have been hanging over the future of this government's green growth policies during the last few months. I believe that those uncertainties will mostly clear up when the new Committee on Green Growth is officially launched before the end of this month. In this regard, I'm pleased to note that we'll be hearing Dr. Che Sun Hong, Senior Secretary for the President for Future Strategies in the closing plenary this afternoon. Green growth is part of his policy portfolio. His speech is expected to be the first public official statement of this government on its stance on green growth and will hopefully clear away some of those uncertainties. So, Korea is now in transition from green growth 1.0 to uh, green growth 2.0, to use my own language. With this as background, I will, in the remainder of my time this morning, quickly make several points by way of uh, looking back on green growth 1.0 and then looking forward on green growth 2.0. The purpose is to share with you my own critical assessment of President Lee Myung-bak's green growth policies as one who has witnessed the making of these policies as a private person inside the process, as well as my own suggestions on how Korea's green growth regime should evolve under President Park Geun-hye. Yesterday, we lamented the lack of the political will in many countries to pursue transformation toward the green growth and discuss the issue of how to generate the necessary political will. I believe that you may be able to draw an implication or two on this matter from my remarks. In reviewing Korea's Green Growth 1.0, I should first spend a few minutes overviewing what has been, what I consider, think has been accomplished. The first accomplishment of Green Growth 1.0 has been that green growth was made a national agenda. I have been fond of quoting Victor Hugo saying that nothing is as powerful as an idea whose time has come to convey my view that green growth was an idea which began to impact people's values through which it was bound to bring about lasting societal changes over time. I'm not just saying that green growth was legislated into a major national agenda as I will shortly explain. More importantly, people's attitude on the environmental issues have begun to change. To give just one indication, in a national poll taken in January last year, that is about one, a few months ago, one year and a few months ago, 97% of the respondents said that Korea's green growth strategy should be continued by future governments. Secondly, a comprehensive institutional framework for green growth has been established. This began with the launching of the Presidential Committee, as well as its Secretariat, followed by the release of the National Strategy for Green Growth, the first five-year plan for green growth, the establishment of local green growth councils in all of 16 metropolitan governments. The National Strategy for Green Growth is a very comprehensive national economic and environmental development blueprint for the period up to 2050. The Framework Act for Low Carbon Green Growth was enacted, which overarches over many other laws, such as the Energy Framework Act, Carbon Climate Change Act, Sustainable Development Act, Framework Act on Territorial Management, Framework Act on Urban Development, Framework Act on Science and Technology, and so on. Thirdly, a systemic approach to greenhouse gas emission mitigation has been launched. The national medium-term emission reduction target of 30% of BAU by 2020 was adopted, requiring the peaking of actual emission level in 2014. Sectoral reduction roadmaps has been, have been adopted. The emission target management system, which is a precursor to the, ET, uh, the, the emission trading system, was launched in 2011. And the launching of the ETS itself in 2015 is now being prepared for, and other, many other subsidiary measures by sector are being introduced. 
Fourth, a systemic approach to accelerate increases in the supply of clean energies has been launched, beginning with the adoption of the first basic national energy plan for the period 2008 to 2030 to decrease the share of fossil fuels from 83% to 61%, while increasing the shares of renewable and nuclear energy from 2% to 11 and from 15 to 28% uh, by capacity, uh, respectively, and various measures for this purpose have been and are being introduced. Fifth, investment in the development of green technologies and industries has been accelerated. A roadmap for uh, research development and, and the deployment in 27 main green technologies was adopted and has been launched and has been revised recently. Supportive measures to promote an early commercialization of 10 core green technologies by 2020 have been introduced. Solar cells, rechargeable batteries for automobile, LED lighting and display, green IT, green cars, smart grid, fuel cell, CCS, advanced water treatment are among them. The Green Technology Center was introduced, uh, launched. Sixth, information and legal infrastructures for circularization of the economic and industrial structures, such as an integrated national system for resources, recycling management, and integrated waste management networks have been built. Expansion of the eco-industrial parks to the national scale is in progress. And seventh, various measures to promote green business management and green living in earnest have been introduced. Eighth, various measures to strengthen the adaptive capacity to climate change have been taken. A comprehensive plan for adaptation to climate change by sector was adopted. Korea's own national standard scenario for CC, uh, climate change uh, in South Korea as well as for the Korean Peninsula for up to 2100 has been developed as a measure uh, for uh, climate change adaptation, the four major rivers have been uh, restored, and that is the bottom has been dredged, 16 weirs or small dams have been constructed, and the riverine areas have been redeveloped. This was a huge project and has been vehemently opposed from the beginning by many environmental groups and the opposition politicians. The ninth and the last accomplishment of uh, Green Growth 1.0 that I want to cite consisted of international green growth policy initiatives which have helped Korea be recognized internationally as a global leader in the green growth campaign. For one thing, Korea has been playing a leading role in pushing green growth as an international agenda. Korea championed the green growth agenda at the OECD, at the G20 Seoul Summit, and through other processes such as the East Asia Climate Partnership, the Korea-Denmark Green Growth Alliance, and this green Global Green Growth Summit. Korea championed the uh, Me First approach to emission reduction commitment at UNFCCC, a conference of parties, and the green growth approach to sustainable development in the lead up to Rio Plus 20. Korea led the establishment of uh, GGGI first as an international institution and more recently as an international organization. And this and other efforts, I believe, catalyzed the birth of green growth knowledge platform. Most recently, that is in October last year, Korea won the hostship for Green Climate Fund and now hopes to play a catalytic role in successfully launching this GCF as an effective global climate action financing institution. You may consider my list of accomplishments of Green Growth 1.0 rather long. By the same token, you may be surprised to hear me to report to you that the list of criticisms of G Green Growth 1.0 are equally long. The public and business are broadly supportive of Green Growth, have been broadly supportive of Green Growth 1.0. But the civil society, including environmental groups and the media, have been rather critical of those policies by and large. To cite some of those criticisms, the most serious one is about the Four Rivers Restoration Project, on the ground that this was pushed within a short time period of only four years, despite a chorus of objections from environmental groups that 
uh, especially with the uh, dredging and construction of weirs, it has destroyed the natural ecosystem in and around those rivers to the detriment of the natural environment. Another one is about the nuclear power content of the energy plan to increase the supply of nuclear power from 15% uh, uh, to 28% during 2006 to 2030 by capacity, while renewable energies would increase from 2% to only 11%. Thirdly, Green Growth 1.0 has been criticized for focusing on climate change and energy issues while allegedly being too light on the protection of the natural resources and environmental services. Fourthly, and this is a criticism which I personally share rather strongly, Green Growth 1.0 has failed in managing demand for energy and improving the efficiency of energy use. This shows up, for example, in the fact that while the plan was to see decreases in the energy intensity of the economy during the period of uh, 2008 to 2012, it actually increased during this period. This, uh, uh, in part, reflects the failure to manage demand for electricity and improve the efficiency of its consumption. This is where the green growth policy failure is very conspicuous and acute, as a result of which Korea has been experiencing the threat of power failure during the last two years or so. The cause of this failure has been the policy of the government to fix the electricity price and further to maintain its level below the rising cost of power generation, especially since the oil price shock of 2008. The electricity price has been, has been adjusted upward occasionally, say at the rate of once or twice a year uh, since then, but never fully to cover the cost, so that all consumers of electricity, including the industry which accounts for more than 50% of total consumption, have been effectively subsidized for consumption of electricity. There are two reasons cited for this stance. First, increases in the price of electricity along with those of other public utilities need to be suppressed to keep inflation under control, the fear of inflation. Secondly, or the, the, the reflection of the failure uh, to uh, cope with inflation with other more appropriate measures. Secondly, in times of a global economic crisis, the international competitiveness of domestic industry uh, should be supported to promote economic growth. The suppression of electricity prices has been causing a rapid increase in the consumption of electricity, even caused the blackout for the first time uh, last year in 40 years or so in 40 years or so, and has been calling emergency measures, calling for emergency measures to curb the consumption of electricity by big industrial consumers by offering substantial pecuniary compensation, while an extreme heat in summer as well as a prolonged cold weather spell in winter has been increasing in frequency. All energy experts, including many among my former uh, fellow private uh, mem uh, colleague, uh, the private members of the Presidential Committee on Green Growth have been urging the government to reform the electricity pricing system, beginning with a rather sharp price increase to recover the cost. Not now has been the consistent reply from the government. Instead, the government has been introducing a long list of measures to promote the development of efficient electric, electric appliances and machinery including a public campaign to save energy and electricity, but accepting the price increase. Fifth, the critics argue that Green Growth 1.0 has not been guided by appropriate metrics and indicators to measure the progress with green growth. It is true that appropriate aggregate indicators of green growth have not been developed and introduced yet. Sixth, the climate change adaptation plans have been uh, criticized for not being scientific enough and for not being based on the local conditions and views with the local community excluded from the planning process. And seventh, under the G to, uh, Green Growth 1.0, Green Growth has simply replaced sustainable development as a development goal and no serious discussion of the requirements of sustainable development has been undertaken as a result. Now, by way of rounding up my speech, I would like to note there are two problems which I think are underlying uh, causes of uh, those criticisms and, and problems. I'd like to note those two problems. 
One is the governance failure in approaching the formulation and implementation of green growth policies. Green Growth 1.0 has been driven essentially by the top-down approach driven by the presidential office without being supplemented by an appropriate bottom-up architecture under which the broad community of relevant academics and experts, civil society, and local communities participate in the setting of the vision, strategies, and policies for green growth, and thus share both credits and responsibilities for policies, successes, and failures. Another important problem, I believe, is the failure to place the concept of green growth appropriately in the context of sustainable development, especially in creating synergies between green growth objectives and policies with those of uh, uh, social development and integration. In the Korean context, growth, including green growth, is seen to be a jobless growth, growth led by and mainly benefiting export-oriented big businesses and one accompanied by worsening income and opportunity inequalities. We refer to this phenomena as polarization. Any appeal of green growth to the public seems to have been rather fragile, uh, being mainly a notional one and has not been rooted in a widely shared sense of benefits from green growth. This in turn has been, spo has been uh, And this has uh, made bold transformational measures for green growth, such as the electricity pricing reform, which would trigger what uh, Sir, uh, uh, Lord Stern referred to as an energy industrial revolution, and making progress along this green growth track increasingly difficult. Those two points have important implications for the question of political will. Yes, it takes a bold and persuasive vision, a systematic approach to a comprehensive policy set, and an inspiring political leadership in order to launch transformation toward green growth. The political will not only has to be generated, however, but also has to be sustained. A top-down architecture, which was just mentioned, has to be, for this reason, supplemented with a bottom-up approach under which the public academics, experts, and civil society all participate in the discussion and development of policies, soon beginning to lead the government from ahead. Secondly, in order to, for a green growth policy to be maintained, green growth policies have to be embedded in the larger framework of sustainable development in order to ensure that the benefits of green growth are expected and seen to be shared widely within the society. So, my conclusion on Green Growth 2.0 may be summarized as follows. After the initial period of intensive top-down approach to the launching of the strategy, the time has come to build the bottom-up architecture in Korea. From this perspective, it is probably about time to delegate the responsibility for green growth policies to the Prime Minister. However, it is also essential that a bottom-up architecture for green growth uh, to be uh, created and developed by thoughtful leaders in the so so civil society to lead and guide the government. And I would like to count uh, myself as one of those uh, leaders. The government should take up sustainable development as an overarching goal for national management, ensuring that mutually supportive linkages among economic growth, environmental protection, and social inclusion are in place. From this perspective, while the Prime Minister takes responsibility for GG, uh, green growth policies, President should take responsibility for creating the appropriate linkage among the three pillars of sustainable development, and especially between green growth and social inclusiveness. I'm pleased to note that this is what I think President Park is about to do with grand social integration as one of our top political agendas, uh, which I have referred to at the outset. And finally, these proposals are not meant, are not meant to exempt President Park to take the uh, political leadership for green growth. She should express a strong support and commitment for the continued pursuit of the uh, green growth uh, strategy and with a full backing for a Prime Minister's initiative, and only this time with all weaknesses properly addressed while strengthens are further uh, enhanced, therefore Green Growth 2.0. And the domestic momentum for green growth will be much, will, uh, will, will, uh, much need, for, uh, will need 
as well as enhanced by her continued pursuit of global green growth leadership on behalf of the Republic of Korea. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Dr. Yang, for sharing your insight and experience with us. And we look forward to your continued uh, contribution and leadership in promoting green growth here in Korea and beyond. And uh, as uh, Dr. Yang mentioned, uh, Dr. Choi Soon Hong, the Senior Secretary for Future Strategies from the Office of the President, uh, will be joining us during the closing plenary session. So you will be able to maybe hear about the new government's uh, green growth policies then.